Hello, my name is Rebecca Muller. During today's session, we're going to be looking at some of the most important topics in the study of algebra, relations, functions, and their domains and range. First, let's consider some different types of set notation. The first we're going to look at is set builder notation. This is read the set of all x such that 1 is less than or equal to x, which is less than 2. We can also give this in a different format called interval notation. In interval notation, we want to write down where the interval begins and where it ends. So in this instance, it begins at 1, we put a comma, and it ends at 2. Because the value of 1 is included, we're going to use a square bracket in front of it. Because the value of 2 is excluded, we'll use a set of parentheses. So this notation means exactly the same thing as the set notation does. On the number line, we can give the values of all of the numbers between 1 and 2, including the point 1 with a closed circle, excluding 2 by using an open circle, and filling in in between them. So we have three different depictions of exactly the same set. Now, what would we can do is look at different sets of ordered pairs. For instance, let's look at two sets here and define what we mean by the term relation. What is a relation? It is a set of ordered pairs, basically. Here we have the set F, which includes the ordered pairs negative 2, comma 3, 1, comma 1, 4, comma negative 1, and the set G, which includes the ordered pairs 3, comma 5, 7, comma 1, and 3 comma 4, 1 comma 0. Now, what we are doing is looking at two different sets for which we can look at their d domains and ranges. The domain of a set is a set of all x values in a set of ordered pairs of a relation. The range, the set of all y values in the set of ordered pairs of a relation, is called its range. Back to our previous screen, note that we have two sets of ordered pairs, and what we'd like to consider are the domains and ranges. For the domain of f and g, we want to pick out all of the x values. For the ranges of f and g, we want to pick out all of the y values. So in doing that, we are going to look at the domain of f and list it as the set which includes the values negative 2, comma 1, comma 4. The range of f will be its y values. In this case, we have 3, comma, 1, comma, negative 1. We do the same thing for the, val the domain and range of G. Here, the domain of G is the set that includes the values 3, 7. Notice that we have another value of 3. It can be listed again, but it doesn't need to, and 1. And for the range, we have the set of values 5, 1, 4, and 0. Now, in order to look at this graphically, what we can do is go to the Cartesian coordinate system because we have ordered pairs. We'll start first by graphing the function or the relation f, that is, and we plot the point negative 2, comma 3 by moving two units to the left and three units up. We then plot the point 1, comma 1, 1 to the right, 1 up, and the plot four com the point 4, comma negative 1 by moving four units to the right and one unit down. We do not connect these dots because all the, gra the graph of f gives us are these three selected points. The graph of g will move three units to the right and we go five units up. We have to go seven units up, seven units to the right and then one unit up, which would be off of our screen here. We have the point three comma four, that's three units to the right, four units up, which notice would be directly underneath the other point, and the point 1, comma, 0. Now, what we want to consider is the domains and ranges, not only in lists of ordered pairs, but also what if we're given the, the relation graphically. Let's look at our first example. Here we have a picture of a graph, and we can give the value of the domain and range by looking at what are the x and the y values independently of each other. The x values notice this graph continues to get wider as we work outward. So we're going to end up going all the way to what's called negative infinity for the x values and all the way to positive infinity toward the right. We can write that using interval notation with a set of parentheses. We have 
parentheses, negative infinity, comma, infinity, close parentheses. This is going to be the domain of this relation. The range is going to be given as all the y values. Notice that my y values run from the bottom of the screen to the top. The graph continues down infinitely, so we start at negative infinity, and then continues upward until we get to this highest point on the graph, and notice the y value of this point is 3. Because that point is a part of the graph, we want to enclose it in a set of brackets. Now it's your turn to try to do the same thing. I'm going to give you another graph, and I want you to try to find the domain and the range. In order to do this, you need to turn off, of the, turn off the tape while looking at the graph, write down what you think is the domain and the range for this particular function, and then come back and we'll do this together. Now that you've tried it on your own, let's see how we get the domain for this function, or for this relation, that is. Uh, we need to go from left to right for the x values. We start at negative 4 as our smallest x value and go to positive 4 for the largest x value. Because both of these are points on the graph, we're going to enclose this in a set of brackets. For our range, we look from the bottom of the graph to the top, the smallest uh, value here is a negative 3, and that goes all the way through. We pick up all values until we get to positive 3. And again, we can enclose that in a set of brackets. Now, we want to now look at what's called a function. What is a function? A function is a relation in which each element in the domain corresponds to exactly one element in the range. Alternatively, we can define a function as a correspondence in which each element x from a set called the domain is paired with one and only one element y from a set called the range. Let's see how this, this definition of a function plays out on the examples that we had previously. We had two sets, f and g. Notice that in f, for every x value, there's one and only one y value associated with it. f is going to be a function. In the set G, notice that this point, 3, 5, and the point 3, 4 have the same x value but have different y values. Therefore, this is not considered a function. Also, we want to consider another example. Here we have two lists of numbers. In list 1, we have the values 0, 10, another 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. We have in list 2 the values 100, 150, 175, 200, 250, and 300 and 400. These correspond to points if you read them from left to right. So the point 0, 100 is going to be a value in this set. Notice that this is not going to be a function because of these two entries here. For the value of 10 as an x value, we have two different y values, 150 and 175. Next, we want to consider what this looks like graphically. And in order to do that, we're going to look at the graph on the graphing calculator.